Hello there and welcome to uh, another Cubase tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to be doing something which could be considered as an uh, engineer's worst nightmare. Uh, I've been given an album to, re uh, to mix, not to record, an album to mix by a band uh, uh, who I think they fell out with their original recording guy, the original producer, and they've sent me the stems. But the, the, the guys just sent me a stereo mix of all the drums. It sounds like this. So it's all mixed down to a stereo track. Uh, there's no way of getting them back. Um, there's no way of them re-recording. They've spent thousands already getting this far. Uh, so they've asked me what I can do. Uh, and normally I would, uh, if I had like each individual track, I'd be able to just use a trigger and then go ahead and replace them with some good drums. Uh, but I don't, I just have a stereo track. So what I'm going to do uh, is uh, it took me a, a day or so to work this out. Uh, the most efficient way of doing it, I thought I'd share it with you guys. Uh, because it's, uh, you never know when you're going to have to do this. And, you know, you need to put uh, food on the table so you can't turn down every little gig that you get. So uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get into it. So we're going to be listening to... Uh, the track or just the drum track there's no point in listening to the rest of the track I'm going to focus on the drums uh, we want to isolate the frequency of every single drum and luckily for this track in particular it's just kick uh, snare and hat uh, and a few cymbals now and again there's no toms which could uh, mess things up or make things more complicated so this is a this is the simplest one I've got to do. There are other tracks that are way more complicated, but for this one, we've just got kick, snare, and hats to worry about, or the metals. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to play it, and I'm going to filter out nearly everything but the resonant frequencies of the drum. So not, none of the other frequencies are important to me. It's just, just the resonant frequency. So we use a uh, high cut filter. And we want to tie this right down. So if you're listening in headphones, you can just hear um, the kick drum. There's a little bit of snare going on as well. I've got a 40 decibel per octave cut. This is a pretty drastic cut. And then what we want to do is use a gate. Turn the attack of that a little bit. That's about right. There's no snare coming through that. Want to tune tune it just to the frequency of the kick drum. Okay, it's a little bit of twiddling. That sounds about right. Okay, what we're going to do is uh, render that in place. So the rendering paper, oh, select it, go to render in place, uh, render settings for this is going to be the complete signal path, which is the EQ and gate. And then what I'm going to do is keep the source events on change. That'll save me having to unmute everything afterwards. So this is the kick drum. And we get a, a version of the kick drum, which is heavily filtered. And we just use that for triggering uh, the, the Slate digital drums. So the second thing we're going to do is 
let's do the hi hats. So we turn this game back down. Uh, I think the hi hat's going to be a just really really high frequency. And then we use the filter, so we just get the the hi hats. Really fast attack, really fast release. Just a little tick. That should be enough. Okay, and we do the same again. Render in place, the current settings. We should name these as well. So this is going to be the hat trigger. The one we did already is the kick trigger. Mute these guys, and let's do it one last time for the snare. The snare is a little bit more work. Turn the filters off, let's just listen to the track again. We want to find the resonant frequency of that, that snare drum. Let's log it down there. Go back a bit. Still got the noise gate on it. Filter out everything either side of this. to the noise gate tune that to it. the frequency we found is about 220 noise gate so it only picks out of the snare Okay, and like I say, if we had tom toms as well, uh, we'd have to tune each tom individually depending on their their uh, their note as well. So if we had a tom tom at like one fifty six and another one at like one thirteen, we would have to find the resonant frequency with this this really high Q, like a really high Q, just to make sure that it, nothing else gets gets through because we want to trigger only uh, the drum that we we're uh, trying to replace so we have just the snare this could be a good way of actually making uh, electronic drums as well uh, right so render in place render with current settings and then we're done pretty much with the uh, uh, creating the triggers uh, if we just listen to the three triggers on their own, we get this. The very definite frequency range is there. Uh, now what we want to do, we want to uh, select the SSD sampler. Uh, that's this one. Um, we've got like a Blackbird kit uh, loaded up. To replace them with these kick snare and hi-hat uh, 
so while well, this is selected uh, click what we want to listen to so this is a snare and you can see here all the, only the snares have been uh, let through and we want to do is create MIDI notes so down here create MIDI notes uh, and for the MIDI we want a D1 and if we go to first selected track we want dynamic velocity that will keep the velocity that the drummer played if you don't want to do that if you just wanted them all the same velocity you could have fi fixed velocity but this time we just want dy dynamic velocity and we can change the scaling of the ve velocities later and then that drops snares in Yeah, instead of this, it's been replaced with uh, the slate drum. So while that's still selected, we can move on to the hat trigger. Do exactly the same thing. Create MIDI notes, this time on F sharp. F sharp is where the, the closed hi-hat is. together we'll, we'll adjust the uh, the velocities later but this time we're just going to go to the kick do the same thing create MIDI notes and C1 for the kick drum there you go we're pretty much done The, uh, that's the hat so we can we can either raise or lower the velocities of that we can change the scaling of velocity so it sort of changes the dynamics so they're less or they're more uniform rather than all over the place so we change the dynamics a bit bring them up same with the snares Oh, I'm really loud and then we'll bring them up the really loud ones could be crash symbols that sneak through well there you go now we've got all these uh, different uh, we've got them all individually uh, down as MIDI so we can use the, the SSD mixer we can turn the kick up or the snare up or we can turn the room mics up we can do we can do anything with it now uh well if you just compare that to the original drums which is probably still affected let's close this off turn reset the equalizer reset the Noise gate, turn the noise gate off. Right. So that was the original. And that's uh that's the new one. And obviously we can we can change the drums around, we can change it to any kit we like. Let's just quickly change kits. What do we got? What else have we got? Let's put it as a deluxe metal. That's quite nice. Or deluxe funk. Yeah, or anything. Uh, and like I say, a mixer, we can, we can turn the room up. 
can EQ things individually, we can change velocities individually. We've got just way more, um, way more things to do with it. Uh, and also, like I said, uh, crash symbols uh, is very difficult to separate from uh, hi hats, so you have to do them by hand. Um, but you've got a whole bunch of different hats, so so that would that would have been a that would have been a crash. I find a nice crash there. And of course, I quantize this up as well, um, if you so wished. Anyway, that's about it. Um, like I say, once you've got this far, the possibilities are, are endless. Uh, but it's a it's a little bit difficult to uh, to uh, do anything with uh, a stereo mix of a drum track, unless you want to use it as overheads. You could totally just use this as an overheads track uh, and then smash the crap out of it. Let's, well, let's just try that. Oh, we don't want these on. We can disable these guys, eh? The kick triggers are no good now. The other triggers. So this remove selected tracks. Yep, that's fine. So let's just use these as uh, overheads. Compress. Let's do a vintage, vintage compressor on it. Saturate it. Limit it. Put some reverb on it. Abbey Broke Plates Reverb. There you go. Uh, that's about it. Yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you got something out of this, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.